Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average five-minute chart provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. So I've marked out a series of three points here on the Dow chart. You can see the bottom line here is a move top being around, we'll just say, 18,150, bottom being around 17,750. Um, so what's that four or five hundred points something like that now let's look at the stories that are associated with this because I find this fascinating this tells you how fake these markets have become every day these markets the people that are running the world and rigging everything they're getting worse and worse by the day now I'll show you the three stories that we're looking at here uh, the first one is Janet Yellen, this is actually, I'm going to read the, the shift commentary about Yellen, but Jan, Janet Yellen came out on the 6th saying that stocks were overvalued. It wasn't an irrational, ex, exuberant speech like um, Greenspan gave in the 90s, uh, which then, of course, the market turned around and went the other direction, the NASDAQ to 5,000. Um, but it was the same sort of thing. The next story is this mystery buyer of stocks. This happened the next day. So this, this is the 7th. So on the 6th, Yellen says something that's negative for stocks. Well, instead of saying something, why does she do something like raise rates? Because they can't. They're trapped. These people, these people are lunatics. They, they have created a situation they cannot get out of without a catastrophic worldwide collapse. That's, that's what these people are. They're, they're these uh, educated idiots. They're these academic uh, nutcases that have, have just pretty much destroyed the world's uh, economy now. Um, we'll see that in some of these things. But the next, next story, again, is the mystery buyer that stepped in. And then the story after that is uh, on Silver Doctors here is this uh, article from uh, Dave Kranzler that uh, there's no BS like the BLS. So that was Friday that we had that, was the BLS. So these, these are the events on the chart. You've got Yellen saying the stocks might be overvalued, the market craters. We open up the next day and the market rallies based on this mystery buyer. And then on Friday, the market explodes higher on this jobs report. So let's look at the stories first of all. Let's start with the Yellen story. This is Peter Schiff's take. Fed Chair Janet Yellen spooked investors Wednesday when she warned against sky high equity values. And in a strange turn of events, she's finding an unlikely ally in her assessment, the former, uh, in the form of her biggest critic, Peter Schiff. <laughs> By the way, they spin things. It's crazy. Oh, it's CNBC. Not surprising. On CNBC's Futures Now, the outspoken shift said that the stock market index, the SPX, is more than just a little overvalued. It's extremely overvalued. But rather than defending Yellen's call, Schiff instead blamed the Fed's policies for the frothy valuations that Yellen was warning about. It's not just their policies. They're buying the stuff themselves. According to Schiff's logic, the Sky-high valuations for equities are a direct result of the Fed's easy money policies over the past couple of years. She said that artificially low rates have forced investors to buy stocks and in the process have made them more expensive. Quote, Janet Yellen was half right when she said the stock market was overvalued, Schiff of Euro-Pacific Capital said on Thursday. According to Schiff, the Fed is now trapped and unable to raise rates as he believes doing so would prick the very bubble in stocks that it created. Quote, if the Fed was really going to raise interest rates, the market would be a lot lower, he said. As a result, Schiff is convinced that the Federal Reserve will now not only only not raise rates anytime soon, but will likely enact another round of quantitative easing. By his logic, the Fed will do anything to keep stocks high. Quote, that's also why I don't think the Fed is going to raise interest rates, because I don't think Janet Yellen wants the stock market to go down. This whole phony recovery is based on asset bubbles, and the Fed is not going to intentionally prick those bubbles. So how overvalued does Schiff think the stock market is? It's difficult to say, he said. I don't know how far the market will drop because I don't think the Fed will allow it to. 
That's the absolute truth. It's surprising that that made it on mainstream media. So here's the next story. That that was what happened on the 6th. Uh, the market started tanking based on Yellen's comments. Now, the 7th, uh, it says three days ago. Um, so uh, that may not be accurate that it was the next day. But this this is one example of the buying. Three days ago, when looking at unprecedented record outflow from U.S. equities, coupled with continued inflow into bond funds and what B of A's Hans Mickelson would likely dubbed a great anti-rotation, we asked a simple question, who's buying? No, really, who's buying? Look at the charts. There's the bonds. You can see uh, just a dump out of equities and they rush into bonds. You can see a decoupling here. Uh, they frequently show this one on Zero Hedge of the uh, difference between equity flows and where the S&P 500 is. Then yesterday, the spoofing algos were briefed spoof were briefly spooked when Yellen, for the second time in under a year, issued a warning about valuations. Only this time, instead of basing, bashing the biotech and social media sector, the non-series 763 certified financial advisor brought attention to the entire market, saying, quote, equity market valuations are generally quite high. She was referring to an S &P level in the S&P around 2100, aka 20 21 times forward gap, PE multiple switches, where the S&P has been trading for the past several months, a level which was as high as 2120 in the first quarter on February 20th of 2015. Yet one entity that clearly disagrees with her assessment is none other than her peer institution in Switzerland, the Swiss Central Bank, which, as we noted earlier, owned a record $1.1 billion in Apple stock as of March 31st. The Swiss National Bank is is also the answer to the question we posed rhetorically a few days ago, who is buying? We now know because while everyone else, hedge funds included, were dumping stocks in droves, here is what the Swiss National Bank was doing. And there's the change in the Swiss National Bank's equity holdings. Together with companies engaging in record amounts of stock buybacks, the Swiss National Bank was buying billions and billions worth of shares. So much, in fact, that the U.S. listed equity portfolio rose by a record 40% to $37 billion. And it goes on. Um, so that, that's absolutely crazy. Think about the implications of that. You have central banks buying stocks to prop up the stock market. What kind of an insane world is that? It's no longer a market. And this is proof. They now why why would they do that? Why would they have Yellen come out and make a comment when actually these central bankers are the ones that are buying stocks? Maybe they were testing the market. Maybe they wanted to see what the reaction was. Maybe they wanted to see if there's anybody still left in the market. Uh, if the market just simply does nothing, then they know they're in complete control. Um, it's like playing solitaire with yourself and then cheating. Um, it doesn't make any sense, but that's what they're doing. So let's get to the next story. Uh, the Dave Kranzler one. There's no BS like the BLS. Uh, I call them the Bureau of Lying Statisticians. This was Friday. This is on this huge ramp right here. The BLS used fictitiously calculated birth death model plug metric to pad today's report of 223,000 jobs added in April with 213,000 fairy tale jobs. That's right, 96% of the jobs supposedly added in April were BLS BS. The Bureau of Labor Statistics armed with a highly unreliable Census Bureau employment data sample, you the taxpayer pay for this tragic comedy, released its extraordinary overanalyzed and extraordinarily useless non-farm payroll report today. According to Bloomberg, the Wall Street Brain Trust consensus estimate was for 220,000 jobs added to the economy. The ASTRA report number was 223,000. As predicted, the S&P melted up. Click to enlarge. And there it is. There's the melt up in the futures connected to a fake payroll number. Of course, the the hedge fund algos completely ignore the unexpectedly bad number of 126,000 for March, which was revised lower to an atrociously horrific 85,000. This is by design, people. Hedge fund computers only care about a headline report. The revision does not make the headlines. 
As further predicted by my friend and colleague Mark Kelstrom's strategic energy research, the BLS used its fictitiously calculated birth death model plug metric to pad today's report with 213,000 fairy tale jobs. We wrote about this here. You can verify this link. I'm not making this up. I'm not sure uh, Lewis Carroll could have made this up. So they apparently they predicted this number based on knowing how, how they lie. The only incorrect prediction was that it was not a huge beat of expectations. However, it was a huge beat of the whisper number given the poor ADP payroll report. I did suggest in a post earlier this week that the ADP report was intentionally managed lower to set up today's surprise and help the Fed stimulate a hedge fund algo SPX melt-up. So there you go. That That's what they're doing. They're They're having their Fed head come out and talk the market down. Then the Swiss National Bank is coming in and buying the market up. And then they're putting out a fake payroll number and they're buying the market up on that number. Could these markets get any more insane? Now, the upshot of all this is, is going to be this. If this market is fake, and I think we can all agree it is, it's a fake market. We've looked at, now technically this thing looks like it's gonna go up again. So who knows? But we've looked at the CAFR information about the uh, how how many of the stocks are actually owned by government entities. Um, we we've looked at now we're seeing that the, the Japanese uh, central bank now the Swiss central bank I'm sure the Federal Reserve as well are buying stocks. So what this means is that this is something that they can literally pull the plug on overnight. They completely control it. They completely control the prices. They can just shut it down. They can crash it to nothing because there's no real market there. It's just their computers trading with each other. So this is a very, very dangerous place to have any money at all, in my humble opinion. Now, on the other hand, silver is a very, very good buy right now. Now, I'm not gonna say with certainty that you know, other people have hinted at, and I've hinted at that we're somewhere near here in valuation, around the the four or five dollar level. If we do a, a price inflation adjustment, it it makes sense if you think about the amount of money that was printed during the financial collapse. Um, silver here is probably just as cheap as it's ever been uh, in, on an inflation adjusted basis. Uh, now, if we're talking about physical silver, uh, and that's the only thing that we really follow, because if you're in the paper markets, then they're just going to rig them and destroy you. So physical silver is just the most unbelievable deal right now, and uh, you can protect yourself from what's coming. And what's coming is that these lunatics that are running things, who are playing solitaire with themselves and cheating, uh, they're going to blow the whole thing up. At, at one point, or they're just going to shut the whole thing down. That's going to happen. I don't know how soon. No one knows how soon. Maybe some insiders know when they think they're going to, but no one I know or have ever met knows when this is going to happen, but it's going to happen. It's an economic certainty. So let's look at the Lunar Series here. I went ahead and pulled, um, the members know um, my recent recommendations on which coins um, that I think are the best buys right now. But uh, this is a pulling of the Lunar Series here, half ounce. You can see that I restricted this to just a half ounce. Now, the, the half ounce of the 2015 is inching up a little bit. Um, I've seen it as low as 1150, um, 12. So, so it is inching up a little bit on that half ounce. Uh, they got 311 there, but the but the big story is going to be these others. Now you can see the horse. Uh, we were buying that, you know, less than a year ago for the same as less than this goat is right now. It's it's jumped up. You can't find them anywhere else either. This is this is a fairly accurate price. Look at the snake, the half ounce snake. They're trying to get 28, 26. Now I'm not I don't know if they're moving any at that price. Maybe they're onesies and twosies, but still. Unbelievable, 2826 for the half ounce snake. Look at the dragon. I remember buying these anywhere from 1250 as high as 16, 17, 18. 
Um, look at them, they're at 30 bucks. They're getting 30 bucks for these. So those are the, those are the um, bullion ones. I'm not gonna look at the proof ones because they're always way overpriced. You can never get them close to spot. Now, if you remember when we did the thing on Belange P, his, the one he was bashing was the, the mouse. Of course, you can't even find that thing. Uh, that thing's probably 150 bucks or something. Um, they don't have it. You can't find it. It's so rare. Here it is, 17,000 coins in the entire world. Um, but here's, here's the monster. Look at this. $84.99 they want for the half ounce dragon. Boy, I wish I would have stacked more of those rather than the one ounce. The half ounce is actually going for more than the one ounce dragon. I mean the one ounce tiger. Uh, when I saw this coin, I knew this coin was going to be a big winner. Of course, I've repeated many, many times. You know, it's Chinese symbolism. It's Year of the Tiger. And uh, I believe China is the tiger. So, it, and they're going to want these coins. But $84.99. That is unbelievable. So, if you're looking at something that you want to go up that isn't going to go poof uh, in the middle of the night, like this financial system can, they've proven to you that they can do it because they do anything they want. So they could say to you tomorrow, I'm sorry, your accounts are worthless. And we'll talk to you next time.